One morning, a well-known CEO is sipping coffee, catching up on the morning news. And this, just coming into our newsroom, Bill Ackman has filed a 13D on VirtuCon. The activist shareholder wants to break up the company and jettison CEO Eli Wexler. With Wexler on his way out, Jim Cramer will no doubt be adding him to the CEO wall of shame. While Wexler's banker is sleeping. On the other side of town, the enterprising Mac Lewis is hard at work, relishing the power of relationship capital via the deal in Bordex, and eager for an introduction to Eli Wexler. In this business, it's all about who you know, and with Bordex, Lewis leverages the relationship capital of his entire firm. Bordex connects the dots, from Lewis to his colleague on the energy team, to her B-School buddy on the Virtucon board. Now a few quick phone calls, and Lewis has a personal introduction and a meeting with Wexler. Relationship capital with Bordex saves the day. Lewis pitches Wexler on his strategy to save Virtucon, and Wexler knows it's a winner. The beginning of a whole new relationship, while Wexler's former banker is still asleep. I think relationship capital, is, frankly, is important these days to all business. But in the business that, uh, that we are in, um, it involves public companies, public company board members, management teams, and understanding that network and where people sit, where they have sat in the past, um, what, the, what the degrees of separation are among that, um, that set of folks is just very valuable information. I would say that we live uh, in a networked world. Uh, the network and the network effect has only become more critical. It's hard for me to see how relationship capital isn't at near the top of most folks' list because relationships and relationship investment is what drives business.